Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hocassin, Delaware. Today is October 4th, 2024. Happy birthday to my brother Bobby and also our mom. Now let's take a look at some of the photo highlights from this week. Let's start off with the beautio. Looking at this bird, we do see dark patagial bars and a belly band, making this a red-tailed hawk. And we know it's a juvenile because it does not have a dark trailing edge to the wings or a red tail. Here we have a somewhat lanky raptor with a long tail and long, thin, pointed wings. This is a northern harrier. And looking at the plumage, we see a gray head, mostly white underneath, dark wingtips. This is the adult male plumage, sometimes called the gray ghost. Adult male, northern harrier. Here we have an exhibitor that landed in a tree nearby the hawk watch. We see a relatively small head with a bug-eyed look. It looks like big eyeballs on a small head. Kind of a messy, thick streaking to the upper breast, and all of the tail feathers look to be about the same length. This is a sharp-shinned hawk juvenile. We had a day with northeast winds, and we had the first push of a couple hundred migrating Canada geese, but that's not what this is. This is a different species. We see these birds are all dark, and they have a long neck sticking out, but they also have a very long tail. And if we were to watch this flock, we would see that they were taking turns gliding. These are double-crested cormorants. But speaking of geese, here we do have some Canada geese, but if we look at the second bird, it's actually quite a bit smaller than the other ones. So this could possibly be a cackling goose. It's hard to say for sure sometimes because there's quite a size difference between different subspecies of Canada geese, and sometimes you'll get a runt Canada goose that's quite a bit smaller. So it's better if you get a really close look and can see things like the size and shape of the bill, but certainly a bit smaller. And later in the season, we do see cackling geese mixed in with the migrating flocks of Canada geese. But sometimes from a distance, it's hard to be positive. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and rounded wingtips. So we should be thinking exhibitor. But is this a sharp-shinned hawk or a cooper's hawk? Looking at the overall shape, it's not extremely lanky. It's a bit compact looking. We see that the tail is very squared off to the tip because all of the tail feathers are about the same length. Relatively small head, kind of relatively shorter, more rounded wings. This is a sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have another small raptor, but if we look at this one, we see very pointed wingtips, making this a falcon. This is an American kestrel, and looking at the banding on the tail, since all of the tail feathers are banded, we know that this is a female. Now I'm going to flip back and forth between the kestrel and the sharpie, and I want you to focus on the wingtips. So again, on the kestrel, we see very pointed wingtips. As we go back to the sharpie, it's more of a rounded wingtip. So pointed versus rounded. So a lot of times from a distance, by the speed of the flapping, we can tell that it's a raptor about this size, but to tell between the sharpies and the kestrels, a lot of times we're looking to see if it has the pointed wingtips or the more rounded wingtips. Here's a species we haven't given much love to so far this season. Here we have a small compact vulture. We see that it, overall it's dark with white only here at the wingtips and very short tails. These are black vultures. Here we have a large, lanky raptor with a black and white plumage that's very distinctive. This is an osprey. Here we have three birds together, and looking at them, we see that they have slightly different plumages, but they all seem to be the same shape and size. So I'm seeing a very compact-looking beautio with somewhat pointed wingtips. On the top two birds, we see a dark tail with a wide white band to it. On the bottom bird, we see a tail with a little bit more banding and bit of a lighter color overall. It doesn't have a dark trailing edge to the wings. So these are broad-winged hawks with the top two being adults with that nice banded tail. And the bottom one that's more pale with more banding to the tail is the juvenile broad-winged hawk. So we went through the whole month of September never really getting the big push of broad wings we were hoping for. In fact, we barely broke 100. But this photo from October 1st, at least we got one small kettle of three broad wings high overhead. So um, very disappointing year for broad wings, but we were happy to see any of them that we can get. When we're talking about Cooper's hawks, a lot of times we talk about having a rounded tip to the tail. But when they have the tail most of the way folded like this, you don't really see that rounded tip as much. So I just wanted to show this posture of Cooper's hawk because this is something that we need to be familiar with. This is a shape that is 
definitely Cooper's hawk. Overall, we see a relatively large head. We see a very straight leading edge to the wings, just holding the wings out very straight. We see a long tail. Maybe you get a little bit of a curve to it. The other thing that jumps out to my eye is that the head looks very brown. And then as you get to the breast and the underside, it's very white. So if we had a closer look at this bird, we would see some streaking here to the upper breast. But from a distance, you see sort of a darker head and a very pale underside. So this is a juvenile Cooper's hawk. Here we have a falcon with a very distinctive facial pattern. We see kind of a pointed tail. As this bird came over, we could tell its large size. And we see horizontal barring to the underside, making this an adult peregrine falcon. And immediately following it, we had this bird, which is the same shape. We see that, again, that very pointed tail. But on this bird, we see more of a vertical streaking. And again, that's if the bird was perched up in front of us. The streaking is vertical, making this a juvenile peregrine falcon, so one that was born this summer. Here we have two adult red-tailed hawks flying together, and I wanted to include this photo just because it's a nice comparison. You can see this bird on the top is much more heavily marked. You can see it has a really thick, dark belly band, whereas the bottom bird isn't so heavily marked. So there's some amount of variation in this species, but these are both adult red-tailed hawks. Just for fun, here's an adult bald eagle, and as we're getting into October, we're definitely starting to see more and more bald eagles migrating, and that will continue and, and continue to increase as we get into the end of October and into early November. So plenty of bald eagles to come. Here we have the upper side of a hawk in a soar. From the overall shape, we should be thinking Budio. We look at the plumage. The first thing that catches my eye is that this area of the inner primaries is paler than the more inner part of the wing. So it's not really a pale crescent. It's more of a pale patch or a pale square. If we look at the tail, we see it has a brown tail with some narrow banding to it. And we also see that here in the upper tail covers, we have a lot of white. So this is a juvenile red-tailed hawk. And if we weren't confident about that identification, here's the underside of the same bird. Taking a look, we see those dark patagial bars here in the shoulder area, and we see that belly band. And again, since it's a juvenile, it does not have that dark trailing edge to the wings. So overall, these juvenile red tails, a lot of times they look quite pale because they don't have that dark border to the wings. And again, we see that that tail from the underside, we don't see the banding as much as we did on the top side, but certainly not that pure red tail that we would see on an adult red-tailed hawk. This is the juvenile red-tailed hawk. Here we have a really dark, immature bald eagle, and I'm not positive what age this is. A lot of times when you see birds like this, it's an older immature, but looking at this bird, the head is almost completely brown still, which is usually a sign of one of the younger birds. So not, not sure the exact age on this bird, but definitely on the darker end of the spectrum of what we would see. And from a distance, you may not even be able to pick out this white speckling to the underside. Here we have the distinctive M shape of an osprey high overhead in a glide. Here we have another bald eagle, and this is the classic juvenile plumage. So we see a dark brown head and underside of the body, but there's quite a bit of white in the wing pit areas here. So juvenile meaning it was born this summer, and you can see an even trailing edge to the wings because none of the feathers have been replaced yet. Here we have a woodpecker that migrated past, and the most distinctive thing is big white patches to the secondaries, making this a red-headed woodpecker. Here we have a hawk with a very distinctive plumage, very orange underneath with black and white patterning to the wings, and a dark tail with thin white bands. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. We just took a look at the juvenile or first-year bald eagle, and I mentioned how it had an even trailing edge to the wings because none of the feathers had been replaced. Here's an example of a bald eagle that's one year older, and we can see that there's two different lengths of feathers. You can see these ones that stick out more are retained juvenile feathers, and the shorter ones surrounding them are ones that have already been replaced one time. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross, so we should be thinking excipiter, and this one should be pretty easy to identify. We see that the overall shape, the bird is pretty lanky looking. We see that it has a nice bold white tip to the tail and the tail looks a bit rounded. We look at the upper breast and we see that the teardrop streaking is mainly concentrated there and not so much as you get down lower and we see a large head. This is a classic juvenile Cooper's hawk. 
Compare that to this bird where we see more of a messy streaking to the underside. We see a smaller head, more compact shape, and we see that the tail feathers are all about the same length. This is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have some water birds with long necks with dark heads, and we see trailing feet and a nice even wing beat. These were the first two common loons of the season. Here's a raptor where the first thing you should notice are the very pointed wings, so we should be thinking falcon. We see that distinctive facial pattern. This was another adult peregrine falcon. Here's another juvenile cooper's hawk. Again, a nice classic look at this species. And we see a bump here in this area, and that's called a full crop, which means that the bird ate recently. Here's a photo that represents an identification challenge that we'll be dealing with a lot a month from now as we get into the end of October and into early November. That time of year, a lot of times the identification challenge is red-tailed hawk versus red-shouldered hawk when they're gliding high overhead. So this is an example of a red-shouldered hawk. And the one main thing that stands out is the length of the tail. The red-shouldered hawks have a slightly longer tail than the red-tailed hawks do, and they don't look quite as big and bulky as the red tails do. But we'll deal with that more over the coming weeks as we start to see more of both of those species migrating. And we'll end it with one more exhibitor. We see that this bird has a somewhat more compact shape. And look at the face on this bird. This bird has a very bug-eyed appearance kind of messy streaking underneath. This is a juvenile sharp-shinned hawk. If we take a look at hawk count for the last couple days of September, we see that it was pretty slow a couple days, only had seven birds, then seven. We ended on the 30th with a day that was okay with 48 migrating raptors. So the final September 2024 total was 1,309. So I think this was the lowest total ever just because the Broadwings pretty much completely missed us this year. In fact, if we compare those totals to the last couple years, this year again, 1,309, last year, 16,844, so huge difference. And if we go back to 2019, when we had a low year for Broadwings with only around 600 some, that year we ended up with about 1,900 birds. So this was the lowest September ever, um, even going back to the very start of the count, the first season, which I don't even know that they were doing it full time, only 2,200 birds, but um, you know, there's a lot of variation in September, as you can see some years 16,000, some years 3,000, some years 4,000, 12,000. So it just depends whether or not we got the broad wings. And this year we certainly did not get them. So let's forget about September and move on to October. So far, we've gotten off to a pretty good start. October 1st, we had 267 birds, which was the highest day so far this season. And that was mostly led by a good flight of sharp-shinned hawks. But really, in this early October period, we're getting a really good variety of raptors. And some days we're seeing all raptor species that we expect to see over the course of this season, except for golden eagles. It's still a bit early for them, but everything else is possible right now, and including today, we got all of those species again, except for golden eagles. For the second and third, we had 78 birds and then 70, and then today on the fourth, we had 104 birds. So this is a really good time of year to get out and see a wide variety of raptors. It doesn't have the draw that maybe September has for the broad wings, and it doesn't have the draw of later in the season when we're always hoping for golden eagles, but there's something fun about this middle part of the season as a lot of species reach their peak time. Really good migration of exhibitors and falcons especially. We're still getting ospreys, we're still getting a trickle of broad wings, and we're starting to see increasing numbers of migrating vultures and buteos. And over the next few weeks, we'll start looking for the first golden eagles. The weather coming up the next few days is looking really nice. You know, we had all those rainy days last week with uh, five or six days of rainy and cloudy weather. Finally, the sun has been coming out the past few days and looking ahead, it's looking like for the coming week, there's going to be a lot of sunny skies and northwest winds. So really good winds for migrating hawks, but maybe a little hard to spot them in the afternoons when they get up high if there's not too many clouds, but would expect a pretty steady migration over the next week and hopefully some big days. So hope you can come out and join us at the Ashland Hawk Watch. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.